What's up guys, Clickfiend here again, and I uh, haven't done a video in a while, and I thought, you know what, I'll do a fun one that just, you know, you can see really nice stuff in it. So um, I'm going to be showing you all the kind of newish electroplated stuff that I've got, and uh, I'm going to do like a comparison between my resin prints and my FDM prints, just so you can have like a visual idea of what they look like. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Alright, so here's um resin one, FDM one, so we'll do the resin one later, and I'm just going to do like... Um, show what it looks like from a distance and do close-ups just so you see and at the back as you can see here it, it did start to do that ripple stuff because uh, the PLA started shrinking so obviously the metal plate started rippling but there you go it looks pretty good I'm super happy with this one all in all it's got a patina on it what it looks like that's the, the rippling just so you see that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the back, that's the top. And there you have it. This has came out really nicely. I was really happy with this one here. Came out really good. Alright, now the resin one. And here we have our little lovely resin skull. This one came out real nice. I'm super happy with this one. It looks a bit dark here because I've got my, my camera is literally like nine centimeters away from the model. I've got there's not much light getting it to it from the front, but it came out beautiful. This is exactly what you want shiny plates to come out like. You know, you could plate this easily in silver and copper, or gold, I mean, because it's already copper. But there you go. So that's what that one looks like. So here I've got my two Arnie's. This one I kind of patinaed his face but left his hair alone so his hair is like really nice and shiny. I mean, it doesn't look so shiny on camera, but believe me, it is super shiny. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm not an expert in lighting, but there you go, that's the other one. He is completely super beautifully crisp, as you can see. You can't see any layer lines on him. Well, I think you can slightly, just there. But that's like this weird, what do you call it? Uh, salmon skin, I think they call it. But yeah, it came out really good. I think the thicker you plate it, kind of goes over those lines a bit, but... Still can see them a little bit. So here's the kind of I love the texture of these patinas, it's so nice. And then you've got the shininess of his head compared to obviously the just the pure shiny one there. That's like 100 percent shiny. There's the hole in the bottom. So here we've got my They Live Scops. This one is uh, FDM and this one is resin. Again came out pretty nice. That's FDM here. Some weird business happened on the top. I think I dropped it and it smacked it. <laughs> so my bad there. Again, that's the bottom. And that's that. And that's been uh, lacquered and stuff like that after the patina. That's why it's shiny. Or I'll do a close-up of the uh, resin one because it's so far away. So that's the close-up of the patinaed they live sculpt. It's a bit shaky hand, but there's a hole in the bottom as usual. There you go, I think it came out pretty damn sweet. Okay, moving on. Here's a, my version of my take on the Tigris mask from Gladiator. Or Tigris de Gaul, or Gaul de Tigris, like I've forgotten, but there you go, that's that. So that one came out really nice. This one just looks so good, just because of the shiny nature of it all, just looks really nice. Super happy with this one. There you can see the slight layers on the top from the resin printing right there on the dot. I didn't sand it at all, so. There you have it, that one looks great, super happy with that. This is my Pusheen Kitty Burger Cat. Really love this one as well, just came out fantastic. This is a solid block, there's no hole in the bottom. There's just a, a draw mark from the plating process. But there you have it, that one, even, even his whiskers came out so nice, super happy with this one. Hope it's in focus because I'm just kind of going from my little screen Anyway, if you want to see that one, <coughs> that's the resin version of it, just in case you're wondering how it printed. But yeah, I don't know if it's in focus, there you go. Super cute, I love that one. It's probably one of my favourite models ever that I've made. So here we've got my kind of Finding Nemo Shark. So this one came out really nice as well. I hope it's in focus. Um, yeah, plated even inside the mouth and all the teeth because I used silver. If you've got to go inside cavities, you've got to use silver. 
because graphite won't cut it. Um, yep, so that's that one. That one came out. I put a little hook there just so I could attach it as a chain where it's like bling or something. And here we got um, Freddy Krueger. There you go. And that's from the bottom. That's from the sides. This one came out really nice. The edge came out really good here. So this, the face isn't actually that shiny because uh, this was when my solution was running out and the brightener was running out. So um, as you can see the ring, this is a little bit like James Bond like. So uh, yeah, the ring came out really cool. But the rest kind of came out matte. But that's not a problem because I can just put some uh, polish on it and then polish it up. Or add a patina I think will be more suiting for this one. It will look all rotten and green. It might look quite cool. But that's that one. Here's my Dr. Hill sculpt from Reanimator. This one was literally kind of the solution was dying, didn't really want to plate. I was seeing how far I could push graphite working. I obviously uh, didn't coat it heavily enough or didn't put enough connection near the end. So you can see it's kind of coming off there. But this one I literally just left alone and I uh, didn't pull it out the bath quick enough and it just started to decay. So uh, that's what happens. That's why you gotta, when you're, when you're metal plating something, take it out, put it in some distilled water and then hit it with a hairdryer otherwise um, it's going to really get affected by uh, the atmospheric conditions you need, you need to keep it sterile as you can but there you can that came out really cool really happy with that one can't even see the lines on that okay we're going to hit the FDM ones now these are all FDM from now on and I just wanted to show you this skull because I really loved the patina on this one it was just so awesome looking so this is what this one looks like now I did drop it at the back and you can't really tell but I've got a, a kind of copper spray that looks quite similar to copper kind of masks it, you can see the, the damage there though but apart from that it's alright just looks really beautiful in my opinion I just I just love this kind of solid green patina but I'll show you another one anyway so here's another nice model I made I think this is called Fisherman's Daughter or something like that very attractive daughter indeed but uh, yeah I had fun modelling that and uh, yeah really like doing the folds and stuff but yeah, this one plated really nicely as well. I gave it that lovely, it's got that lovely kind of surf blue patina as well inside there. So um, yeah, really happy with that one. Again, PLA and um, yeah, got some wood bubbling there, but I'm not sure. I left this one in the tank for a good, I think, three hours actually. I was worried that it wouldn't get done, but it, it finally got done. And then when you patina something, it covers come some of the deep errors anyway, but super happy with that. Here's a close up of this one. So that's what that one looks like. Some funky bumps there, but that was me not <laughs> cleaning it right beforehand. Acetone bubbles, but yeah, this one's really nice. I really like this one. And there you go. Crazy bottom. Yeah, this is easily one of my favorite ones. <clears throat> this is my Hellraiser. One of the first kind of attempts I did. Extremely shiny on the back there, just super shiny, so nice. This is a really old plate by the way. Um, so um, this is what it's going to look like if you do it properly. No, no wobbling, creasing, folding, nothing. I put PVA glue inside it before I filled it full of plaster because sometimes uh, the solution gets inside and kind of messes up. But yeah, I can still see a little bit of rust starting to happen in the inside so I've left this one literally just on my kind of window pane for a while but yeah it came out really nicely super happy with that one and this is a model I think I based on a Michelangelo sculpt or something so um that's what this one came out like and uh yeah this one came out really nice super happy with it um yeah I added a patina because sometimes I think that when you make everything super ultra shiny like like these um, kind of resin plates or whatever, or it doesn't matter resin particularly, just any pure brightener copper plates, then sometimes they look a little bit cheap, remind me of like McDonald's toys and stuff like that. So I like to age them or put polish on them and manually go over them just to give them a nice kind of look. I think it suits them nicely. So here we have um, a scan that I did when I was in Barcelona of a door knocker. And I plated that and this again is in PLA, red PLA as you can see. And um, yeah, just really had fun making this one with a door knocker type thing on it. Kind of just put a nail through there. But yeah, it came out really well, super happy with this one. So there you have it. Actually the macro is not too bad on this. 
because the lens is literally that's it not very far away so yeah and I'll finish with it like an HR Geiger -y style one so that's this one here again PLA like all the other larger stuff I've got and yeah I had kind of fun modeling this one messing around with ZBrush stuff like that and uh, again this is the more of a matte feel as a obviously the I'll bring along the shiny one to show you because the solution was kind of running out of bright now and I didn't really make an effort to super super shine it up because I didn't really want to but I guess I could if I wanted to so this is my favorite kind of patina sculpt it just came out so damn good I couldn't have wanted any better and this is a, an FDM print by the way all printed in one no gluing no nothing even the sword just give it a bit of a sand down So yeah, really lovely. I love this print. It came out so good. But the patina just it's so smooth and the way it's reflective and stuff, it's just perfect. I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for better. This one's just the creme de la creme. I love that one. That one's on my shelf permanently. So there you have it. Then my metal plate is a resin and FDM prints. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm really I'm quite happy to share my techniques, but I'd like to have a little more subscribers, so I'm kind of telling more people, not just like 1500 people I think I'd like to share it with maybe 10,000 people so I'd aim, I'm aiming for 10,000 subscribers then I'm just going to share exactly how I do everything now I've developed all my kind of techniques myself because no one really wants to share this stuff there's good people like Jason Welsh out there who does videos about metal plating he does he tends to put like um stones and stuff and plate around them and rings and stuff like that so um, it's slightly different but at the end of the day metal plating is metal plating so it's all the same and he knows what he's doing probably a lot better than I do but we have completely different techniques especially when it comes to coating the stuff with um, either graphite silver or zinc whatever whatever you whatever you want so um yeah there you go um I'd like to hit 10,000 subscribers and just just for the people who want to know I print with an Ultimaker whether it's an Ultimaker 2 or an S5 then my that's my FDM printer and my resin printers are um I think Elegoo Mars Pro 2 and the Mars Pro so there you have it thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't subscribed and uh, I'll see you soon now just before I'd go I thought I'd say this is the the patina that I use for my lovely kind of old school effect just in case you were uh, wondered what it was so this is what it is it's a sculpt nouveau product i don't like their blue one but the tiffany green is really good all right guys see you later